It's been a while since I've done a Kling video, and there have been a lot of updates. So let's get right into it. First off, the website has been completely redesigned. On the sidebar, you'll now see tabs for effects, image generation, video generation, the new sound generation tool for creating sound effects, the try on feature, lip sync and extend. Let's check out the new effects. There are six available and the newest one is called anime figure. You've probably seen some of these effects in viral TikToks or YouTube videos. Here's the bloom bloom effect. Dizzy dizzy. Fuzzy fuzzy. Mochi mochi. And boom boom. I uploaded this image to test it out, and I thought the dizzy effect would be fun. It costs the same number of credits as a five second video in professional mode. And here's the result. Very good, and I didn't realize it added sound too. That's a nice bonus. The next update actually came out a few months ago, but it's definitely worth mentioning. It's the face reference tool in the image generation tab. Here's the updated interface. Now DeepSeek is integrated into all the prompt boxes, which helps improve your prompts automatically. Right here is where you can upload a reference image. I'm going to use this one I created in mid-journey. Once uploaded, Kling will try to detect a face. If it can't, the image won't be usable. After that, you'll need to choose your reference focus, the whole subject, just the face, or the entire image. I'll start with subject. Let's say I want her sitting at her kitchen table drinking coffee. I'll let DeepSeek generate a prompt based on that. This result looks solid, so I'll click Use Prompt. There are two key settings you can tweak here. Face reference controls how closely the generated face matches the original, including facial expressions. Then there's subject reference, which influences how much the model sticks to things like the subject's clothing, hairstyle, and pose. The higher the value, the more faithful the result. I'll increase that a little. You can also adjust the aspect ratio and choose how many images to generate. Here's what we got. She looks exactly like our original character. In one version, she still has a hand in her pocket and the other hand is holding the cup. And in the other image, both hands are holding the coffee. Her outfit's almost identical, but the pants are a different color. Let's try maxing out both settings. Now you can really see the difference. The reference image has a much stronger influence. Her clothes are a perfect match and her pose is nearly identical. But in one image, it kind of looks like she was just pasted onto the background without any blending. Next, let's try changing her clothes and facial expression. Let's have her wearing pajamas and smiling at the camera. I'm keeping both reference settings maxed out for now just to see what happens. As expected, the prompt changes didn't do much. Her clothes and expressions stayed the same because the reference settings were too strong. I'll lower both settings. This is better, but her hair color is different, so I'll adjust the subject value one more time. Now her hair color returns to normal, but she's no longer wearing pajamas. Maybe a better approach is to focus just on the face. So I'll switch to the face tab. I'll leave the reference strength the same and re-roll the prompt. Okay, now she's wearing pajamas, but still no smile, and her hair is brown. Then I noticed the prompt says her hair is chestnut, which is incorrect. So I fixed that. Quick tip, whenever you're using DeepSeek or any prompt enhancing tool, make sure to actually read the prompt and make corrections if needed. Now I'll lower the reference strength a bit and try again. Finally, she smiles. She looks slightly different, but this is closer to what I wanted. So depending on your goal, you'll probably need to experiment with these settings a bit. It's all about finding that sweet spot. You can now create AI-generated sounds directly in Kling. Just head over to the Sound Generation tab to get started. All you need to do is type a description of the sound you want into the prompt box. You can also enhance your prompt with DeepSeek. 
and even save your favorite prompts as presets. Kling also gives you a few helpful hints to guide you along the way. You can generate standalone sounds or you can generate sound specifically for a video. Let's try adding sound to a video. First, I'll generate a new video by going to the Video Generation tab. As you can see, it has a fresh new interface too. I'm going to use the Image to Video feature and create a clip of a werewolf terrorizing a city. I'll use DeepSeek to improve my prompt. I'll just enter. People run and scream as the werewolf runs in the city. It only takes a few seconds for DeepSeek to think. Once it's done, you can actually view its thought process by expanding the thinking section. I'm going to use the prompt, but I'll make a few tweaks. The video turned out great, so now it's time to add sound. Underneath the video, there are options for lip sync and extend, but what we want is AI sound. Once you click it, you'll be brought back to the sound generation tab. The prompt box will automatically fill in with a description based on the video, but you can tweak it if you want. The sound length matches the video duration and can't be changed. It also looks like the number of generated tracks is fixed at four. Creating the sound costs 10 credits. Once it is done, the tracks will appear below the video. Let's listen. Wow, these sound effects are incredible. They really bring the video to life. Every sound lines up perfectly with the action, making the scene feel way more engaging and polished. It's impressive how well everything fits together. Now for each audio track, you have a couple of options. You can download the video with that specific track applied, or just download the track itself as an MP3 or WAV file. The video remains the same in each case, only the sound changes. If you're not happy with the results or just want to experiment, you can regenerate the tracks, but keep in mind it'll cost credits each time. One last new feature in the image to video tool. I almost forgot to mention, under the elements tab, when you upload an image, you now have the option to crop it to focus on a specific subject. This is super helpful if your image contains multiple elements, or if you want to highlight just a person's face without including their outfit, for example. That was a lot of updates to go through, and there's still more on the way. Kling is getting ready to release its 2.0 model very soon, and I'll be covering it in an upcoming video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, don't forget to give it a like, leave a comment to let me know which feature you're most excited about, and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss what's coming next. Your support really helps the channel grow, and I appreciate every one of you. Thank you for watching.